Hey, this is Nick, the EMF guy, you know, I'm an author on EMFs and advocate for safe technologies. Uh, I'm the author of the non tinfoil guide to EMFs. I have a course called Electro Pollution Fix, and I think it's a very bad idea to increase our global exposure to man-made electromagnetic fields. And today's topic is very simple. It's about over-the-air wireless charging. This idea that you're going to be able to walk around with your phone and it never goes empty. The battery is always full because you could have different power sources that send energy to your phone through a signal that is akin to a cellular uh, network signal uh, around 900 megahertz to 2 gigahertz and that's the frequency of the signal or a more akin to a Wi-Fi signal. So other companies are trying to send you Wi-Fi, uh, very intense uh, Wi-Fi power beam form, the kind of laser beam to your phone or maybe to your smartwatch or maybe to something else you wear on your person that needs charging and uh, that Wi-Fi signal would in fact be converted to energy and charge your device. So the idea is exciting and it's a, <laughs> it's really a technological kind of wet dream right there that, uh, well, your smart devices are always on. You never have to bother with the, the, the charging and, and all that, uh, that hassle. It's one of the biggest frustrations for most people who love their technology. The problem is, again, if you've been following my work, if you're brand new, you need some context. That radiation is not safe, is anything but safe. So we're going to review just what the technology is. And, you know, this is going to be a short episode because the because it's bad news. I know we all get too much of these bad news. And if you want to leave this video right now, just retain this. Just don't have this in your home. Right, so if there's uh, machines that promise over the air wireless charging in the future, don't have it, don't install it in your home, tell your friends not to do it, it's a bad idea, use cables. And while you're at it, consider using cables for your internet too and cut off Wi Fi. That's one of my most important recommendations I can make you if you want to reduce electro pollution at home. But let's get to that technology, kind of review it very quickly so you know what's coming. So wireless power is coming. A collaborator of mine has sent me this information since 2019 and probably before. He's a, um, a NASA, uh, ex-NASA engineer, 44 years of experience, now retired, and he's an electronics engineer. So I might not have the background to be able to uh, tell you about these things in a very precise manner on a technical standpoint, but I have collaborators who do and who are warning me about these technologies. So wireless power with companies like uh, Energ Energus or Energis and Osea, they're developing true wireless charging. That was in 2018, that's three years ago as, as of this recording. So basically, if we scroll down and look at uh, what the technology is, of course, you've seen these kind of charging uh, your phone with these little gizmos that are kind of wireless charging you to just put your phone on them but they're not that exciting uh, or not that uh, really an improvement over a wire so companies are looking to cut wires and replace with wireless so you have uh, Energus uh, wireless charging that operates similarly to your Wi-Fi transmitting power in 900 uh, megahertz frequency that's similar again to a phone frequency. So you're just adding, if, you're, if you have the Energus wireless charging technology, uh, even if you're not initially using your phone, that, that machine, it could, be, uh, it could be something integrated in the machine or it could be a tile or a certain spot in your home that's gonna have a gizmo that sends that strong cellular signal to charge your devices. So it's just adding more electropollution a very, very uh, bad idea if you want to reduce exposure, which is something I recommend wholeheartedly. You could have wireless power, so everything is wireless. You see your computer in front of you, right in front of your face, is blasting all these machines with electricity. And, of course, uh, there's no effect. No, I'm just kidding. That's, that's my uh, French-Canadian uh, <laughs> sarcasm right now. Um, 
So you have Osia also, that's an example of how a living room could look like. You have your TV, which could contain the uh, Energus transmitter, and then it charges everything. And of course, it charges everyone in the room. So not necessarily a good idea. Uh, you have also another company called Osia. I've been following their newsletter and it keeps getting a little bit crazier and crazier. And they would operate in a technology similar to Wi-Fi. So 2.4 gigahertz or 5.8 gigahertz spectrum in the future. That's uh, the frequency used by Wi-Fi at the moment. So if uh, you believe that Wi-Fi is already an issue, which you should consider that it's already stressful to your biology. Now you're adding more and more Wi-Fi. But not only that, you're adding tremendous power. So imagine that the average cell phone, that's a little bit old news here from a website, uh, electronics engineer, I think. Um, you have up to three watts of transmission of power, right? The high power version of cellular phone, the back phone is three watts. Um, that was old stuff. I think modern phones have a little bit less power than that, but it's starting to change with 5G, where they want to be able to increase the power that a phone emits. Uh, it's not just the power that uh, is uh, interesting or important to think about when it comes to health effects, but it's one of the factors to consider. So the Coda, uh, the Coda tile that's going to charge, right, that that from Osia uh, is running 2.4 gigahertz with 20 watts coming out so that's way more powerful than a phone that's multiple phones right there in your living room in the comfort of your home at about a meter we're receiving six watts of power at a meter that's very powerful and at two meters we're talking about two to three watts at the end of the room we're talking about one watt so now suddenly every cubic inch of this room has power in other words every cubic inch of this room has extremely strong electromagnetic pollution that is well we'll see i'm gonna tease it out that is probably a carcinogen so very concerning what do these guys say about the health impacts i'm gonna scroll down i had prepared but the link i uh, just broke a little bit here so what's very concerning here okay radio beams everywhere are we safe and that's on pcmag.com so these are engineers and normally engineers are in uh, true denial of health effects but these guys actually have a section in there about safety so that's cool so they say you know since the high power energies or osia technology use the same radio frequency radiation as wi-fi one would hope that there are no health impacts, but there are surprisingly few scientific answers to this question. Surprisingly, right? Oh my God. Uh, the Nation has reported, that was in 2018, uh, these uh, investigative journalists, uh, Mark Hag, uh, Herd, Herd, sorry, Hertz, Hertzgard and Mark Dowie, uh, that's my French Canadian also coming up. Uh, the upshot is over the past 30 years, billions of people have been subjected to a massive public health experiment. Use a cell phone today and find out later if it causes cancer or genetic damage. And they say, you know, no, OSIA says there's no impact, you know, it doesn't heat you. But you know that this is not the case. This is not how these EMFs could harm the body. It's not true heat alone, but true oxidative stress, for example. And I have several other episodes on my podcast where I talk about it. One of the first episodes I ever did, Why Your Phone Is Not Safe, I'm going to link it uh, uh, in the show notes or underneath the video version of this podcast. Um, it talks about all the science. So IARC, International Agency for Research on Cancer, World Health Organization, if you believe in that organization, I don't think they're the smartest, but it's something mainstream to think about. Uh, they classified radio frequency electromagnetic fields as possibly carcinogenic to humans. It means class 2B, right? So remember that. That was May 31st, 2011. What happened? That's, well, geez, in three days, that's 10 years ago in three days as of this recording, May 28. Cancer epidemiology upgrade following that decision, right? So uh, Dr. Anthony Miller, one of the very prestigious uh, epidemiologists, Lord Morgan, who's an engineer, um, uh, Udace, and I'm not 
unfortunately not familiar with the work, and Dr. Deverly Davis, uh, co-Nobel laureate and incredible epidemiologist uh, on environmental toxins, they published this in 2018, again, three years ago. They said, we're looking at the studies that came out since that 2011 decision, and we think that based on the same criteria, it supports the conclusion that radiofrequency radiation, the stuff you're going to blast in every room, right? This stuff, this stuff that people are going to put uh, in their living room with these tiles. And I just wanted to be dramatic and show you the, the images. You're blasting this stuff right here. We're talking about that agent. It should be categorized as carcinogenic to humans, class one. What else is in class one? Tobacco smoke, asbestos. Would you fill your room with tobacco smoke nowadays? Well, some people still do, but at least they kind of know. They've been they've been told that it's a carcinogen. Some people still smoke, right? But if you fill your room with this stuff and you don't know it's a carcinogen, you're putting you're taking risks that you don't understand. And that's the real problem. No informed consent in this endeavor. Here you had a journalist, very smart dude, Raymond S. Kazovich, uh, August 2002, again, 20 years ago, almost. Exposure standards, and I just want to say, IEEE Spectrum, this is what, what, what it says here, is the, the top magazine, the flagship magazine of the IEEE, that's the uh, Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. That's the top magazine of engineers that talked about, and that was probably uh, his uh, editorial opinion, but still, it's something to think about that has been published uh, and accepted uh, at, at the time. Maybe the controversy wasn't as bad in 2002 about uh, EMFs. Exposure standards for electromagnetic radiation do not adequately address current re realities. What he says is, you know, we're exposed to dense electrosmog. We're using the same outdated and inadequate standards to calculate our exposure to radio and microwaves. This is what this stuff is. The stuff that you're filling your, your entire living room with is the stuff where we'd have inadequate standards. Let's see the conclusion here, what he said. What's next? We must revise our safety standards and set conservative, and conservative new ones. Uh, and uh, using all the available results and information. For example, the fact that it's now almost certainly a definite carcinogen um, and not just fit previously held assumptions. The telecom industry, which is in deep denial, needs to face reality. And the professional group must work with international agencies to ensure that studies of long-term, low-level, non-thermal bioeffects are put in place. So what happened since 2002? Not much. You have a cap captured agency, the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, which is dominated by the industries it presumably regulates, by Norm Alster, that's the uh, Harvard University Edmund J. Safra Center for Ethics. There's no ethics in that at the moment. So I could go into the technology, and, and I thought I would get geeky a little bit, go into the technology, how the antennas are designed, how it's going to expose you, overexpose you, how crazy the power levels are. And then I thought, okay, no, people have gotten enough of this. And let me know in the comments if you want a very technical episode on these technologies and how bad they are, let me know. But in the end, I just want this practical, this episode to be practical. We are exposed enough to electropollution. In fact, we are overexposed. We don't know what the safe levels of electromagnetic pollutions are. All we know is that there are health effects. Some people are more sensitive than others or impacted than others. And we know it will probably become a carcinogen within hopefully the next 10 years. I don't know if it's going to progress that fast. And there's industry that have captured our regulatory agencies. And these guys at the regulatory agencies are unfortunately quite clueless and in deep denial of the health effects. So what are you to do in face of this doom and gloom information? Well, 
don't purchase these technologies. You're voting with your wallet. Just like it happened with the organic food movement, and I think that things are improving a little bit, people are buying more locally, supporting local farmers, so the industry has to shift to more organic, cleaner foods for the planet. It's a long way to where we need to go to preserve the environment, but we're progressing, right? Same thing with safe technologies. Go wired, turn off the Wi-Fi at night, or completely scrap the Wi-Fi like I did and use Ethernet cables. I have a lot of solutions that I talk about on my podcast. They're for free. Video uh, on my YouTube channel. I have my book and I have the course, Electro Pollution Fix, if you really want to go a little bit deeper and clean up your entire home from various types of electro pollution. All the solutions are there. So if you apply these solutions and you decide not to purchase these technologies that increase electro pollution further and then talk about it in a very casual manner, you know, I, I, I saw these crazy technologies, uh, a Bluetooth enabled diaper, and I don't think it's safe for kids. You know, have these discussions because it's not a tinfoil topic. It's a topic that we all need to talk about in a very laid back manner because it's something that needs to be considered in the same category as environmental toxins like pesticides and herbicides. The less you get, the better off you are. So I hope you like this episode. Please share it widely and simply don't buy into these new crazy over-the-air charging technologies. We have way enough electro pollution at home and you should start cleaning it up. So I'm Nick, DM of Guy Pinot, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.